Hello, I'm Lynn Collett. I'm a published author, a nationally accredited trainer, and a keynote speaker. And I'd like to welcome you to my program on communication. Please don't allow the simplicity of this program to deceive you, because the absolute benefits you will gain by taking in and implementing this information into your life, you will understand yourself better how and why you communicate. Then you'll automatically understand everyone around you a whole lot better. When you consistently use the strategies outlined in this program, you will not only be able to communicate better and create loyal advocates of your business, the learning will overflow into your personal life and create fantastic relationships with everyone around you. You see, when we were young, we were taught to read and write and do math. And when we made mistakes, we were corrected until we learnt the new skill. Communication skills were a different matter. We were all taught how to organise words into sentences, how to pronounce words, and how to use verbs and nouns. But we were never taught how to communicate effectively. When we made mistakes, there was no one there to correct us or even know we needed correction. And we were never told how we can improve or that we needed to improve this most essential skill. Consequently, many people today struggle to communicate or have difficulty being understood and understanding others. The most important thing to focus on is the true nature of our communication. It always starts with us. To be able to better communicate with other people and your clients, you need to first look at how you communicate with yourself. The words you use every day to talk to yourself will always determine how you talk to everyone around you. The skills that you'll learn in this program will help you not only communicate better and create better, more profitable business and happy clients, you'll also have better personal relationships because understanding how you communicate with yourself every second of every day about everything that's happening around you, you'll better understand everyone you communicate with. You see, we all judge. It's a defense mechanism. We've had it from days gone by. We had to have it to survive because it meant the difference of being clubbed to death. This, like a couple of other instincts still with us today, have profound effects on how we interact and communicate with everyone. Every time we see someone, we automatically judge them on some level. If you really desire to be able to communicate better with everyone, including your clients, this is something you'll need to address. You see, the reason we judge is because we first judge ourselves. Then we project our judgments outwards to other people. As part of this program, I want you to take more notice of what and how you judge people and how you judge yourself. Because if you're judging a person when you're having a conversation, it will always slant the conversation. Your listening ability and your body language towards the person. So we need to recognize how and what we judge. We're going to look at active listening. This is a tool that is lost in the rush of life today. Being an active listener actually guarantees you'll become a better communicator. I've actually been in conversations where my input was no more than, tell me more about that. Or really, how did that go for you? Plus a lot of nodding and paying attention. You see, I absolutely love listening to people. And at the end of the conversation, I've been applauded for my communication skills. We're going to talk about building rapport. And this can only be done via communication. Building rapport, not as a manipulating tool, but as a way of being able to help people get the results they want. 
and understanding them better is empowering. Then there are the hidden things like values, and we will be discussing the values later in this program. By understanding that everyone has certain values, yourself included, you will be able to better match your communication with the other person. What are communication skills? You communicate with your words, your voice quality and tonality, your body posture, gestures and expressions. Did you know you cannot not communicate? That some message is conveyed even if you say nothing and keep still. So communication involves a message that passes from one person to another. How do you know that the message you give is the message they receive? You've probably had the experience of making a totally neutral remark to someone and being amazed at the meaning they read into it. How can you be sure the meaning they get is the meaning you intended? You see, communication is so much more than the words we say. These form only a small part of our expressiveness as human beings. Research shows that a pre presentation before a group of people, 55% of the impact is determined by your body language, your posture, gestures and eye contact, 38% by your tone of voice and 7% by the content or words of your presentation. Now, dogs are a great indicator here because they don't have the complication in their life. If you say no to a dog in a happy tone with a smile, the dog will respond happily. If you say yes and scowl at the animal, it'll cringe. So you see, it's how you say it, not so much what you say. The exact figures will differ in different situations, but clearly body language and tonality make an enormous difference in the impact and meaning of what we say. As an example, have you ever been served by someone and the whole time that person is looking down or all around or anywhere except at you? How do you feel? What do you think of that salesperson? You see, they have communicated to you via their body language that they are not at all interested in you and by the look of it, not even in their work. This is a perfect example of how we communicate without saying anything. And of course, the message received was definitely mis misunderstood. The person may have just had a bad experience that day and was normally energetic and chatty. I have a great phrase that I've used for a number of years for these situations, and it's, isn't that interesting? What it does, it takes the focus off you and it places it out there for review and your mind will automatically start looking for reasons this person may be acting this way. Once you are taken out of the picture by that's interesting, you will find that even being treated badly by someone because your focus is off you and therefore you have no attack response elicited, you remain calm and the stress levels go down. But most importantly, it will open the door for better communication with this person. So remember, that's interesting whenever you find yourself getting stressed in communication with others. Today, we have so many ways of staying in contact with each other. We have email, text, and things like Facebook. And then there are newspapers. The main problem, if you look at the statistics I just gave you, is that we only get 7% of the message through words. What the person writes is not necessarily interpreted the same way by the receiver. This to me, explains why there's so much miscommuni miscommunication out there today, especially on Facebook. And relationships are breaking up over a text message. Yes, it seems that we've become embedded in a world of written words 
and lost the art of real communication. If the words are the content of the message, then the posture, gestures, expression and voice tonality are the context in which the message is embedded. And together, they make the meaning of the communication. By understanding this simple information, you can plainly see how many misunderstandings could be eliminated from our day-to-day -day conversations. By becoming a better communicator and moreover understanding how you interpret communication from others will greatly enhance the rapport you have with your clients and better rapport means happier clients and more business through referrals. So if there's no guarantee that the other person understands the meaning you're trying to communicate, the answer has to go back to outcome. You have an outcome for the communication, you notice what response you're getting, and you keep changing what you do or say until you get the response you want. Therefore, to be an effective communicator, act on the principle that the meaning of your communication is always the response you get. We constantly use our communication skills to influence people. All therapy, management and education, and this includes sales, clients and people in your workplace and your relationships, involves influencing via communication skills. There's a paradox here. While no one would be interested in learning skills that are not effective, these effective skills may be denigrated and labelled as manipulation. Now manipulation carries a negative connotation, that you are somehow forcing a person to do something against their best interests. This is often an unconscious manipulation though, because many of our day-to-day -day conversations with others have the predetermined objective of manipulation. And let's face it, children are masters at it. And this is not what we're doing here. There will be some barriers to communication. They're there all the time, especially in our busy world today. Barriers to communication can include hidden agendas, emotions, stress, prejudices, and defensiveness. These barriers need to be overcome in order to achieve the real goal of communication, namely mutual understanding with each other. The importance of great communication skills is that we are all clients at some stage. As clients, we expect to be treated professionally from someone who listens to us and is interested in helping us achieve our goals and ensuring that our needs are met. To a very large extent, your reputation and the reputation of any company that you work in is based on the way you interact with your internal clients, that's the people you work with, and external clients, the people that you serve. To foster good relations with everyone, you need to be able to deal with all the different kinds of people you come in contact with. You need to assess their needs and you need to know how your service or product can help them. Each contact you make is important. So therefore, quality client service means making the person feel comfortable when they approach you, listening to what they have to say, respecting them, and then helping them get what they want, helping them fill their needs. Now I've had a, a pretty bad service story. I was going out to get a new phone and I went into one store and the girl behind the counter completely ignored me for at least five minutes. Then when she did see me, she said, I'll be back in a moment. She walked out the back, did some work, came back out and walked straight out of the store without even looking at me. Do you think I stayed in that store or bought my phone from there? No. I walked straight out of there. I went to another store where the lovely sales assistant behind the counter was not only very helpful, 
very informative and helped me to pick out what I needed and he listened to me, which made the difference. Now what I want you to do is to think back when you had a bad service experience and when you've had a great service experience and fill in some questions about it. Use this to understand how your communication with your clients can affect their experience. I'd like you to take the unsatisfactory client service experience and answer these questions. Describe a time when you were a client and received unsatisfactory service. What occurred to make this a bad experience? How did it make you feel? And what did you decide to do after the experience? Then take a little bit more time and do the same thing with good client experience. Describe the time when you were a client and you got good service. What occurred to make this one a good experience? How did the good service make you feel? And what did you decide to do after the experience? This is designed to get you to focus on the type of communication that took place. Did the person involved communicate well? Were they distracted? Or were they attentive to your needs and communicated well with you? What you may find is it's the communication process and understanding or misunderstanding that leads to good or bad experience. So to do this, one thing you really need to do is become aware of your words. Now, as I said earlier, we are always talking to ourselves every second of every day. That internal dialogue going on in your head can really impact our conversation skills. It sits alongside judging others. It is in fact one of the reasons we judge. This internal dialogue is exaggerated by and expressed via the words we habitually use every day. This is an area that really determines just about everything in your life, not only communication, and that's a program in itself. The words we use habitually will influence our communication. Therefore, we need to start with how we talk before we look at others. I know it sounds a bit back to front, but we need to look at ourselves first. So I'm going to give you a little brief history of words here. Words are used today without even thinking of the effect that they have on others. I've heard some devastating statements from doctors, supervisors, therapists and trainers. Words that would affect that person more than the other person can even imagine. Because words are powerful. Words give light. Words give hope. Words give promise when used correctly to help someone. When we use them in the reverse, they can destroy sales, businesses, friendships, life and hope. There have been many studies done on the English language and they have found some amazing features. Firstly, how many words are there in the English language? It depends on your resources, but around 500,000 to 750,000 words. That's twice the size of the nearest rival, which is German. How many of those words do you think we use? 2,000. That's not a day, that's in a lifetime. This represents half of 1% of the total language. Now, the total number of habitual words we use is around two to three hundred words at the outside. Now, if you compare that with the Bible, where there are 72,000 words, the writings of Milton, 17,000 words, Shakespeare, 24,000 words, 5,000 of them only used once. Now, here's the interesting thing. A unique aspect of the English language is that we have more action words 
than any other language. Why is that? I believe it's because we're a bit more action orientated. When you look up all the emotion words, there are around 3,400 words that describe pain or pleasure. So how many words do you think relate to positive emotions? Unfortunately, just 1,051. That means there are 2,349 negative ones, that's approximately. From this, you can see how easy it is to fall into the trap of using negative words without really realising it. An example is, and this is one in Australia, it's, it's grounded in Australia, I think, is no problems. This has two negatives. No is a negative. Problems, a negative. A habit I have now is to use a phrase, all good, instead. So we're using two positives there instead of two negatives. And that is a simple, simple way of changing how you go from negative to positive with your words. You see, we have a choice. We can use the positive or the negative aspect of our language, and it has power, either to improve or destroy your career, day, health, life and results. So here is a very common cliche we hear or say every day. Someone says, how are you? You say, oh, not too bad. Getting there, or could be better. We are conditioned to these cliche responses without even thinking about it. And we start with a negative, not. Then there's bad. So you see how we use these negative words? Here is a phrase that I use and that I love using. And I have formed a habit of using it on a daily basis. And it always brings a smile to the person's face. When asked how I am, I'd say, if I was any better, I'd have to be twins. Now, you don't have to go that far if you don't want to. Just try answering this common cliche from now on with fantastic thanks and see how much better you feel and how the other person responds with a smile because you've made them feel better too. But there's a caveat here. You need to say it with meaning. It can't just be some rote routine. It's simple, really. The thoughts and internal dialogue we have and the words we use all the time influence how we feel, always. You can change your mood and the mood of others simply by changing your thoughts and words. Now, isn't that interesting? Maybe by being aware of this, we can stop using the destructive words when we feel it happening. Before it gets a hold of us and we can change our outlook on things and how we communicate with others. A great tool is to really think about all the limiting words you use and find a replacement for each one. Then start implementing them into your daily conversations. I want you to think of all the limiting words you use and find a replacement word and start using them. You can do this by writing down all the limiting words. I want at least 10. And then you can add to that some excellent words that you're going to use now and start changing them immediately.